Hey, so we have friends and family that ask me all the time how I cook certain foods that we eat, why we eat the way we do. Uh, so I decided I would just make a video and show you how to make the mac and cheese our style. Um, you know, it's maybe not the best choice of food, but hey, everybody needs mac and cheese sometimes, so I tried to find a healthier way to cook it. Um, so I've just got my water boiling right now. The first um, thing you need to know are the noodles that we use are einkorn noodles. Google it. Einkorn is a wheat product. It's not corn, but it's a better wheat product. So uh, look that up. We use evaporated milk, but I buy organic, so it's a better bad choice, I guess you could say. I use um, white cheddar cheese because I don't want the orange coloring that they put in my cheddar cheese, and I use organic milk. So that's everything that we need. I'm going to start with the noodles since my water just started boiling. This is a 12 ounce box of noodles. I like these spiral cut noodles because they really hold the cheese. So we'll get those going. They have to cook for 10 minutes. I'll give it a little stir. We'll let that go. I'm just watching my clock. I don't set timers. Okay, so it turns out these noodles have to cook for 12 minutes and I've stirred them occasionally while they're cooking. Um, they've been going for about 11 minutes now. So I was looking at this box and the ingredients are organic einkorn and water. That's the kind of ingredient list I look for. I, I want anything that we eat to have the fewest amount of ingredients as I can find because typically they're not going to have chemicals and preservatives and, and crap that we don't want to eat. So um, I really like this Jovial brand. The, the noodles are firm, they don't fall apart, they, they're the closest thing to regular, regular noodles that I have found. I just I really like them. And you know when we stopped eating processed foods we were not ready to give up some of our favorites like mac and cheese but it was hard. You can't hardly replace Velveeta. So um, I wasn't sure how it would be with cheddar cheese but we love it. Everyone that's ever tried it has loved it. I, I get a lot of questions specifically about this recipe so that's why I'm sharing it today. Okay it's been 12 minutes. I'm gonna dump the water off of these noodles over here in the sink. Sorry you can't see this but I figure you know what that looks like. As soon as the water's off I put the noodles right back in the pan and bring it back to the heat. I'm gonna just turn it on low now though keep it going just a little bit. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter in the noodles and let that melt. I guess uh, maybe you can see that. Let me see if I can bring this over here and you can look in the pan. try to get you right over it. Okay. All right, so I let my butter melt. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this whole can. This is a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Let that warm up. We're going to add a half a cup of whole milk. Okay, so we'll let that warm up over a low heat. We don't want to scald the milk. Really, we can go ahead and add our cheese. The recipe calls for two cups of cheese. I just, I have pretty small hands, but I just put a couple of really heaping handfuls of, of cheddar cheese in there. Maybe a little extra. You really can't overdo it. 
This is a very forgiving recipe. It's going to taste good really no matter what. But now you just want to stir it around so the cheese melts. I keep stirring the whole time so that it never sticks or gets scalded on the bottom. And it doesn't take very long for the cheese to all incorporate. It looks really runny right now, but after you get it all melted together, probably five or ten minutes later, usually I make this and then about the time that I'm ready to pull the meal together, I'll just let it sit. I turn the heat off and just let it sit and that liquid thickens up and it's it's mac and cheese. It's ready to eat. Right now it doesn't look so promising, but it will be. The cheese is just about melted. At this point, I'm going to add salt. I use the Himalayan pink salt. I really don't measure. I just do salt to taste and it takes quite a bit of salt. I would say I would say it's going to possibly be as much as a half a teaspoon by the time you're done. I just try it and I taste it and I try it and I taste it and it's just a matter of your own taste really when it's salty enough. I don't know if you can tell that it, the cheese is starting to thicken up. So really about now you can just turn off your heat and just let it sit here on the stove while you get the rest of your meal together. I'm going to add a little more salt. I know from experience it's going to take some more. Just another little sprinkle and then you can taste it and see what you think. Mmm, this is going to be so good. Okay, I'm going to have to get a spoon and taste it. I'm just going to check for the salt factor at this point. Yep, that was perfect. So, a couple of good sprinkles. That's good for me anyway. Can you tell it's getting thicker? It'll keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker. You'll be shocked at how it'll just set right up. And that's it. It's so easy. And it's so delicious. My son is in college now. I call him my man child. And uh, I'm making this for him. He's coming home this weekend. So he's going to have mac and cheese. He's had friends that have eaten it, so it's the best they've ever had. So try it and see what you think.